Life is an incredible archive of stories. If you do it right, or even if you do it wrong, just living long enough will supply you with a treasure trove of memorable adventures. The following memories take place over many decades. So settle in with a cold one and let me tell you a story. When I wore the clothes of a much younger man, I never thought fashion would change. I barreled through life as a time with something for my elders to worry about. It gave me a false sense of invincibility that proved to be a mixture of bravado and foolishness. I didn't move in a straight line. I zigzagged from left to right and slowed down whenever something felt right. I was never a fan of duck and cover, a method of survival I had learned in grade school where hiding under a plywood desk was guaranteed to keep me from being vaporized in case of a nuclear attack. As I grew into my late teens and early twenties, that false invincibility morphed into the concept of confront, challenge, and conquer. It was a survival method. It was a survival method that would help me overcome my fears and frustrations. At the very least, I would be in control of my own fate, no matter the outcome. As my life progressed, a funny thing happened. The more I used the concept of confront, challenge, and conquer, the more confident I became about myself. I began viewing adversity as a challenge, not a conduit for depression. It wasn't as if I didn't have a treasure trove of personal adversity from which to draw, because I did. To begin with, I was living in a wheelchair. This was many years before the Americans with Disabilities Act came into effect. A difficult life was made even more difficult by a society uncomfortable with what they didn't understand. I noticed that people tended to talk down to me. In the literal sense, I understood and could deal with that. But they also talked down to me intellectually. That was not something that was easy to understand or accept. It's a little like talking louder to someone who doesn't speak English. It doesn't make them understand you better. It just makes them feel less frustrated about what they can't do. And so, I embarked on a journey that all the medical experts had told me was impossible. I attempted to level the playing field by leaving the wheelchair behind. I won't say it was easy. Personal growth never is. It took many years of pain, sweat, and tears. The journey was a long one with all the twists and turns that journeys have. But in the end, I found myself walking with forearm crutches. I hadn't completely won the battle, but I had diminished the degree of adversity. I also became emboldened in the belief that if I could overcome this, I could overcome anything. But anything comes in many forms. In that instance, my adversity was within my control. Life doesn't always work that way. Most times, things happen that are out of your control. That is when adversity can take its biggest toll. Life is like a roller coaster. It can go from the highest of pleasures to the depths of sadness in seconds. I am a lifelong bachelor. I've always believed that you can't live with someone else if you can't live by yourself. It has been my extreme good fortune to test that theory on several occasions. But it hasn't been a fear of commitment that has kept me from traveling through life with only one person. To be honest, I never saw any of my relationships coming. They happened when I wasn't looking and they lasted as long as we both thought they should. I should say that most, but not all of them, ended that way. In The Day I Met an Adult Victim of Child Abuse podcast episode, I talked about a personal relationship that lasted 20 years. It wasn't always the smoothest of relationships. Most relationships weather several bumps in the road. Ours would hit one of those bumps every so often. But through it all, we always trusted, respected, and loved each other. It may not have always looked that way from the outside looking in, but we were comfortable with each other. That was all that mattered. Until the day I woke up, and she didn't. 
Hours later, I remember slumping into the living room couch. I looked down into the eyes of her cats, who were looking up at me as if they knew what had happened. My only thought was, what will I do now? At that moment, I realized that the answer was staring me in the face. I had responsibilities. I had to stay focused and clear-headed. I had to confront the situation. I had to challenge the depression that wanted to take over my mind. I had to conquer my fear of the future. It would have been much easier to sink into a bore of self-pity and alcohol-fueled escape, but that wouldn't have changed what happened. It would have only changed me. That sense of purpose got me through Stinky's death about six years later. Jet's passing seven months ago was a little more difficult to deal with, because he had been my pandemic buddy. He was also the last living link to a relationship that had lasted two decades. But my sadness was tempered with the fact that they had lived long and happy lives. Stinky lived to be 18 years old, and Jed achieved the ripe old age of 27. It was comforting to know that I had lived up to my responsibility, not only to Leslie, but to myself. Now, when I think of Jed, Stinky, and Leslie... I have a smile on my face. In the end, I faced these losses and became a stronger person because of the way in which I chose to deal with them. By dealing with emotional adversity in the same way I had dealt with physical adversity. I chose to embolden myself rather than sink into self-pity. Dealing with adversity means dealing with life on your own terms, not the other way around. You may not always win, but how much you lose is solely up to you. Therein lies a hidden strength that will make you stronger when you are forced to face future adversities. I write a fictional series in which the main character is a handicapped man in his late 60s. He has a saying, Life may bend me many times, but it will only break me once. Those are words to live by. Until the journey brings us together once more, take care and stay safe.